It's Saturday evening, January 20th, 2024. I'm Todd Dunn. And because I've gotten a lot of questions um, about some of the damage around here, particularly in the Seawall area of Southwest Harbor, um, I thought I would do a little presentation on that. Uh, what I'm going to do is narrate some pictures I took on uh, the 11th and on the 12th of this month and to show you the road damage in the seawall area of Southwest Harbor. And just uh, to let you know, these are photographs that I took with my Nikon camera. I did not shoot any video, so these aren't video captures. The spot I want to talk about today is uh, on the southern part of Mount Desert Island. If you look at this map of Mount Desert Island, you can see the X down at the bottom of the map. And just to the left of that X, there's a spot where State Highway 102A uh, is right next to the ocean. In fact, it's built on top of a natural seawall. And the ocean is on one side, and there's a pond on the other side. So there's water on both sides of the road. And um, the natural seawall is basically just rocks that have been piled up by the surf during storms. And the road is on top of the piled up rocks. And during the big storms we had on January 10th and January 13th, uh, those storms coincided with very high tides and the surf overwashed the road there at high tide and did considerable damage to the road. And what I want to do is just show you some pictures of the road damage. As I said, we had two storms sort of back to back, one on January 10th and a second storm, uh, which happened at an even higher tide, but was a little less intense on January 13th. Both storms peaked almost exactly at high tide, and the surf went over the road. This picture was taken on January 11th, the day after the first storm, and I am on uh, Main State Route 102A, looking west toward the seawall area. On my right is the inland side of the road, where there's a pond, and on my left, you can't see it, but there is the ocean. And you can see that I'm standing right in the center of the road, and you can see the center line of the road, and it's pretty obvious that the road is flooded. The reason for that is that the pond has an outflow in the form of a pretty good sized culvert that goes underneath the road in about the middle of the seawall segment. And that uh, culvert got blocked by rocks that the surf threw over the road to the far side of the culvert. And they just washed back into it and plugged it up. So the pond rose because we had about an inch of rain during that first storm. So anyway, this is, as I said, looking west uh, on main route 102A, just out of my field of view to the right is a motel. And straight ahead, you can see a wall of rocks. Those rocks were not there before the January 10th storm. Uh, they piled up about three feet high on the road and uh, blocked the road. And that pile of rocks is about 100 feet wide. OK, let's take a look at the next picture. OK. For this picture, I climbed up over the rock pile. Uh, I'm looking back toward where the first picture was taken from. And the ocean is now on my right, where it was on my left before. And uh, you can see the motel I mentioned and the pond as we look at the rock pile over the road. These rocks were piled up about three feet deep on the road. And it was. Uh, quite a mess and a bit of a scramble to get over them because I don't know if you can pick it out, but uh, sort of in front of the house on the right hand side of the picture, uh, there's a home heating oil tank that had washed up on top of the rocks 
and had leaked oil out and the grass that I had to scramble up over to get to the rocks had gotten very slick with leaked oil. But you can see where the waves threw all these rocks up onto the road during the storm on January 10. Okay, now I'm just a few feet past where I was in the last picture, but I've turned and I'm looking toward the pond. And you can see chunks of asphalt up on top of the rocks there and uh, bits of fabric that were underneath the edge of the road that have been washed out. Those bits of asphalt are the shoulder for the road. The waves came over the road here and as they washed back out, they undermined the road and the asphalt broke off and then the next wave washed it up onto that rock pile. Those rocks were not there before the storm. So this is the first real damage to the road. And I should also mention that if you walk over to the edge of the road uh, and look down, uh, you'll find that you're standing on about four inches of asphalt with nothing under it. The road is undermined by about a foot there, and it's about, oh, three feet down to the bottom of the uh, ditch that the waves dug on the land side of the road. Okay, this photo is looking west again. I've walked across the road and faced west. You can see the surf washing up to the left, and you can see the pond on the right. And you can see there are a lot of rocks on the road, nothing like where they big pile of rocks washed over the road. Uh, but what's noteworthy here is if you look at the edge of the road, you notice it drops off. And if I could uh, measure it, it was about two and a half feet down to the rocks right here. Uh, before the storm, the rocks were flush with the edge of the road. So pretty uh, non-existent shoulder right here. If you got a little too close to the edge of the road, you'd be down on the beach. Now we're going to go up just a little bit to where the road curves off to the left. That is where the culvert that drained the pond uh, went under the road. Okay, I've now walked over to where the culvert goes under the road, and I'm looking west. You can see the surf uh, from the ocean on the left and just a little bit of the pond on the right. And you can see where the asphalt uh, here, particularly on the ocean side, has collapsed and the slab of asphalt uh, right in front of me has been lifted up. On the right-hand side, you can't really tell in this picture, but the road is undermined quite a bit, and it's not really safe to step past the white line that marks the edge of the travel lane. Uh, but you can see the big hole where the asphalt has uh, dropped down into where the culvert used to be. So the ocean has uh, really damaged the road pretty badly right here. And part of the damage was that it has partly crushed the culvert and rocks that washed open over the uh, road blocked the culvert on the inland side. So the pond couldn't drain and that's why the road was flooded back where we started. Okay, here we are uh, a little bit further west and I've turned around and I'm looking back east. You can see the motel and a little bit of surf uh, there uh, on the right-hand side of the picture. But let's take a look at the edge of the road. You can see that the rocks have been washed out against the edge of the road. And uh, if I walked right up there, it's about three feet down to the rocks from the edge of the road. And that used to be flush with the edge of the road. So before the road can be reopened, that area has to be filled back in so that the rocks are flush with the edge of the road. You can also, you can just see where the culvert damage is, sort of where the road starts to turn off to the right. And you can see some more rocks washed up on top of the road. Now this is the last picture I took on January 11th. We're looking east again. You can just see the motel on the left-hand side at the far end of the image. And we're looking at the road with the surf on the right. And you can see here that the surf really tore up the road. And there's about a hundred foot long stretch here where the surf ripped the asphalt up off of the road. 
and it eroded the rocks away on the ocean side. It's quite a drop off from the edge of the road down to the rocks now. And on the land side, as the waves went out, they also eroded along the edge of the road and the road is undermined there. And it's up to four feet down to the rocks on the land side of the road. And clearly the road is gonna need a little bit of repair here. When I came over on January 11th, my wife was with me and she didn't wanna scramble over the rocks uh, after the flooded area. Uh, so I went by myself and she went back to the car, so I couldn't stay too long. Uh, so I came back in the afternoon of Friday, January 12th, about three o'clock, as you can tell by the long shadow I'm casting. And lo and behold, the main department of transportation had a road crew there. They had a couple of big uh, front end loaders and an excavator, and they had been working on the road. Uh, here I am. Uh, looking east toward where the road was completely covered with rocks uh, and the it road was flooded. And you can see that the road is no longer flooded, although it is still a little bit wet. And the rock pile is gone, although you can see where the rocks are on both sides of the road. So the state had removed all of the rocks that were on the road here and everywhere else in this segment. And they had also removed all of the broken asphalt, as you see in a second. This picture, uh, again on January 12th, is looking east toward the motel. And the area where the road is all gravel now is where the culvert under the uh, road from the pond out to the ocean is and the state had removed all of the broken up asphalt and excavated the culvert out, which allowed the pond to drain down, which alleviated the flooding on the road. Then they reinstalled the culvert and filled in with gravel. And uh, it was reasonably well packed down. Any car could have driven across that without any trouble. So uh, that is another repair that they did. And we'll move on a little and take a look at some other work that they did. Okay, I've moved a little further west and we're looking back east. This is the segment where the surf had ripped the surface of the road up for about 100 feet. Now uh, the Department of Transportation had removed all of the asphalt that had been ripped up. And you can see they have started to try to uh, rebuild the roadbed in that area and piled up a lot of gravel uh, where the ocean had washed away both the asphalt and the roadbed. And they'd started putting gravel in on the ocean side. Uh, but it had gotten to the end of their workday. So just as I was arriving, they, uh, quit and went away. So this was Friday afternoon, January 12th. The road was certainly not passable yet. On the left-hand side here, you can't really see it, but there's about a four foot drop down to the rocks right off the edge of the road and the edge of the road is still undermined. So they had the road still blocked off and it wasn't passable, but it was much easier to walk. You didn't have to scramble over any rocks. They had cleared all the rocks off the road. And this is the only spot that there were any rocks remaining where the road used to be. And that's because they had piled them up there to try and fill that area in. Now, the next day on January 13th, we had another big storm with a record high tide and the storm peaked right at high tide and the surf overwashed the road again. Now, I don't have any pictures from that, although I did go over there after the storm, but I'll describe what happened. In this area, the ocean washed out most of the rocks that the Department of Transportation crew had piled up to fill in where the asphalt had been ripped up. Back at the culvert, the ocean had ripped up about another 10 feet of asphalt uh, and also had uh, 
washed out a good deal of the rock on where they had reburied the culvert and uh, it was actually a little tricky to walk across had to take a couple very careful steps over pretty big gaps where the ocean had washed the rock out and uh, back by the motel where there was a big pile of rock across the road on the 11th that the state removed on the 12th well the ocean put it back again on the 13th and that's where things are as of uh, yesterday I went over there yesterday afternoon and took a look and the state has not done any new work since the January 13th storm so the road is still impassable uh, they can probably get this road passable in just two or three days of work what they have to do is fill in over the culvert again and get it graded out reasonably smooth fill this area back up and build the rocks up on the ocean side which is probably going to mean uh, either moving rocks around or transporting rocks in and uh, grade the area where the asphalt was completely ripped up smooth and it shouldn't be that hard the only problem with that is is that if we have another storm anything that isn't paved will just get washed away by the next storm so that may not be a permanent fix, but they could probably get this road open in less than a week of work. Uh, the biggest issue is going to be, particularly on the land side, where the road is undermined and what was the shoulder is now about four feet below the road surface. And that's going to take a while to repair. Okay, so that's the damage to the seawall section of State Highway 102A in Southwest Harbor, Maine. Uh, you know, it doesn't look really horrible, uh, but it's pretty bad. They're going to have to bring in a lot of rock to replace rock that was moved around and washed out by the storms, especially to build up the shoulders of the road. And uh, ultimately, they're going to have to repave a good deal of the road. I don't know if they can do that now. It is the middle of January, and right now it's about 17 degrees which is a little cold for putting down asphalt. So it may be a while before the state uh, gets this project completed. But as I said, it looks to me like if they get dedicated to it, they can probably get this segment of road open again in uh, just a week or so of work, uh, maybe even less. And, uh, but if we have another storm, a repair that just has gravel patches on the road, will not hold up because this is an area where the surf washes over the road every time there's a big storm that hits around high tide. So it's highly unlikely that a gravel repair will hold up for very long. Probably would not make it through the rest of the winter. Okay, so that's where, what I wanted to show you. Hope you found it interesting and thanks for watching.